it's a nice brisk day today here in Northern Ontario. We got a dump of snow and I managed to get the truck stuck, stuck in the driveway here, here yesterday for a good hour. A lot of shoveling and then uh, CAA showed up. My name's Dave and uh, this is McCarrow Siding, my end scale uh, railroad. So what we're going to do today is we're going to put in place the foundation for the crusher building, the main building of the, uh, let me see, uh, turn it that way. And I'll give you another shot here. I think that's camera five over there. Let's see what happens. There you go. There's, there's the building. And it's going to sit across uh, two of those tracks. So what I want to do is I want to lay a concrete pad kind of thing uh, that, uh, that the tracks are, are, are buried in or embedded in. So we're going to go step by step. The first step here is I'll just show you what I've already done. Uh, and then we'll glue that stuff down. Once that's done, we'll, uh, we'll stop the video for a little while and let the, uh, the glue set. And then we'll proceed with the rest of, of the, uh, the technique that I want to show you. So it, this might not be a very long video, uh, but uh, I'd like, uh, like you to see this, uh, how I've done this. This is, again, an experiment. I've never done this before. I've got uh, two or three different kinds of pastes and colors and stuff to make, make things look like concrete. Uh, and I've already spent a great deal of time trying to figure out how I'm going to fill in between the track, the track, the rails, and I've come up with the uh, conclusion that I'm going to do it with the two thin stripes of styrene. I was going to use the, the plywood that I bought. Uh, so what I did is I bought a 10 pack of this, this plywood. It is uh, two millimeters thick. So if you put it right up against the track, it's about the right height. Uh, let me see here. Uh, here's a piece of track. And then there's a gap, of course, because the ties don't uh, don't let you get all the way to the rail. So my first thought was, well, I'll just do that, and then I'll fill that with something. Uh, and I still think that's what's going to happen here uh, on some of this. Uh, but when I took this two mil. Uh, ply and cut it to, into a thin strip to put between the tracks in here. I'm going to get that building out of the way before I either break it or you guys can't see what, what's going on. So I'm just going to shove it over there. All right. So I was going to put, um, I was going to put a thin strip between the tracks here. Unfortunately, this is too thick and uh, I'm not the patient of the most patient of, of, of people at times and so I started to take I took a, a knife an exacto knife and tried to split this in half so I would have a one millimeter thick board well that was a complete disaster uh, uh, I wasted one whole sheet just trying it and all I ended up was with uh, with a, uh, a mess on my hands so then I found some, some styrene that was, was laying around. I have a lot of styrene sheets. Um, when I worked at Lowe's, they would always, every time they, they uh, had a new campaign or something, they would put up new posters. Uh, and the posters were always printed on styrene. And one side would be, oh here, I can show you. Uh, where are we, here? Okay, this is, a display from uh, from Lowe's. The other side of this is white styrene, and this is, I mean I've got sheets and sheets and sheets of this. I've got I've got four pieces that are four by eight by five mil thick. Um, I, I just uh, the, the guys were throwing it out, and and uh, being the good Scott that I am, I couldn't bear to see that that stuff getting thrown away. Uh, so I've had that in, stocked up in this basement for. Uh, would be five years um, because so that was five years ago when I when I stopped working with uh, working at uh, at Lowe's. So I got some of this out and I made some 
I made, I have, I think I have now made 15 of these little white strips to, that are going to go in there. Because they have to be exact, 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 otherwise the rails, uh, the rails are going to, the, the wheels on the, on the rolling stock are going to bind with the, uh, on the, on the plastic itself. So I've, I've got two here now and I'm, 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 I'm holding on to them for dear life because after doing all those experiments to figure out which one was the right thickness, I sure as heck don't want to lose these two because I'll have to go back and do it all over again. So anyway, we're going to get started right away here. So the first thing we're going to do is glue down uh, this plywood. And uh, so I'm just going to hop up on my bench here. Now, the, uh, the plywood is, has been shaped a little to follow the contours of the, uh, the ground. I have cut the, uh, the cork here because there's a bit of a hump and that meant that, that found, the building's foundation wasn't sitting, sitting up right. I'll go back here for a little while. We wasn't sitting up right so we, we cut it out and then I'm going to put that in there. Now you can see that my plywood, I don't think you can see it. <laughs> oh, let's go back. Let's go back. Let's see which one we, which one's going to be the better way. Uh, camera two is going to be the better way. Uh, camera two. There we go. There's a good shot. So you can see the three pieces of wood. They've been shaped. Uh, this is a little bit of a curve to it. So they've been shaped with a curve. And this one has to have a little bit of a curve here at the end. I think we're going to take the knife and shave that a bit more uh, because it's riding up high and the top of the wheel is going to bump over that. So the first thing I'm going to do here is just take this little piece and I'm going to just off camera here where you can't see it anyway. I'm going to Gonna cut it down a bit more. Now let's see what that looks like. See, that's much better. That's much better. Now, between the track, what have we got here? I got this as a pointer. You see, there's gaps here. The, the plywood is not right up against the, uh, the, the, the rails. And that's because I'm going to use filler and fill that in so that it's solid. Comes right to the, the, the level with the top of the rail. So for now, we're gonna, we're gonna glue uh, these in place. And then uh, while they're drying, I'm gonna show you two products that I'm considering using on the, on the plywood to make it look like concrete. Uh, one, I'm real iffy on. The other one I just got today, just arrived in the mail today. And, uh, we're going to give it a shot on a piece of practice board and see what it's like. So without any further ado, let's, let's get this, uh, this all glued down. Now I'm just using I'm just using everyday express quick dry wood glue. Uh, this sets up, I think I tell you, it dries in 10 minutes. Uh, so like I say, we're going to we're gonna see where we go with this. Now, let's go. So, glue. Okay. And now, where are my spatulas? There are my spatulas. So we're going to now be careful not to get glue all over the rails. Again, I'm going to use my T-pin. Uh, T-pins is clamps to hold everything down. So, oh, I, uh, I marked on these on these pieces of wood which which edge goes towards the track. 
because uh, so now I'm going to take my T-pins, I'm going to put them right at the edge and as you can see kind of one. Now if you want to see an expert do it, there's a gentleman. His channel is called Boomer Diorama. And he is doing a an eight show. diorama module or er, layout and he has just finished putting his concrete over his rails and uh, I'm not copying him but I am sure appreciative that he's done it already and I can actually have a little bit of experience in there there we go and now we have one more to go and then we'll stop the cameras and uh, probably I'll wait 20 minutes and we'll have a coffee come back and we'll pull these pins and see what we got um, There's the glue. Where did I put that? There it is there. Uh, and the reason you're getting better shots there right now is I went out and bought another camera. <laughs> I now have a five camera studio. See how many lights? Five, five lights. Yeah, five, five lights, five cameras. I've got one up here somewhere, but I haven't got to work yet. I'm just it's. I think it's the cable because when the cam camera is closer to the switcher, it seems to work properly, and when it's at the end of the. Uh, end of the cable up here in the air it seems to be have a slight problem. Okay, it's one two pins. So now these are, are locked down. Oh not happy about that. Can I get a pin in there? Sweepstakes. Okay. Uh, I want just uh, where is it? There it is. I want to show you something that I use whenever I'm laying track. Uh, these are fast track uh, sticks that you can put in between your rails as you're laying your track and you get perfectly straight rails because it snaps they snap right in place between the, the, the rails they're also useful for lay for doing your layout let me just I'm going to get down here there we go get down they're also great because they, they've got these little uh, tongue and groove things at the end and they sort of fit together so you can lay out all your track or a whole section of track using these tape it down and then because it's got the little holes in the, in it 
you can then just take a marker and mark the center of your, of, of your rail. Uh, I have them in straight and I have them in 15 and 18 inch curves. And so uh, uh, most of my locals are big diesels and they need a, a nice gentle sweep rather than anything sharp. Uh, in the yards, like this little yard for, for the for the gravel pit, uh, I'm just going to use a little switcher. So it, if, if, if it's a little tight, it's a little tight, but it's, it's going to be okay. So anyway, we're going to stop the, take, uh, the, the cameras for a moment. And uh, like I say, I'm going to go make myself a coffee. Um, I've also got to go and plug my darn smartphone in, smart smartwatch in, because I guess I've left it too long and it's dead. Um, anyway, I will be back in 20 minutes for you, for me, and just a blink of an eye for you. All right, so we'll see you in 20. So we're back, and uh, they uh, they are as they advertised. It is uh, dry and it's a uh, rock hard. So now what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to take some uh, drywall compound and work it into these gaps on the outside here, so that it's. Uh, smooth and uh, once we've done that we'll stop for today uh, actually I'm going, to, I'm going to demonstrate this new product that I've got I want you to, to see it uh, if you uh, if you watch the, the video on making roads I also have from AK ammo uh, acrylic terrain terrain concrete and uh, I've already tried that I'll show you what that looks like so the first things first we're going to switch back over to the camera where you can see the most. And I'm going to uh, pop the lid off this. And grab a spatula. And I'm not going to take, take a lot. I should be able to get it in here and then uh, anything that's on the wrong side of that that rail I'm just going to take a, a knife and uh, crack it off now, like I say I've never done this before and I'm, I say that almost all the time on everything on this railroad because that's the truth. I have never done this before. I am just uh, a newbie at this. All right, so now we'll try here. Oh boy, this is messy. Oh Lord. Uh, we'll soldier on here. Now the uh, the siren that's going to go between the rails. I am not going to uh, do this plaster to make it tight, tight to the rails. Uh, I want to be able to uh, to run my my rolling stock without there being a huge amount of.
derailments because of things that I've done with the track. Now, Take a sander, come in here and sand it. This, this particular board looks like it's a little too tall. But we'll, uh, we'll worry about that when we come to it. This little container of drywall mud is going to last forever, I think. So, yeah, this is definitely, definitely above the rails. See what we can do to fix that. I think just the gentle, some sandpaper, and uh, Sure, there are people who do this much more cleanly than us, <laughs> but as I say, it is the first time for everything, and this is the first time for this. So I can already see that I'm going to have to take a sander to this edge and this edge up there because for some reason they're taller than the track is. It doesn't make any sense because down at the other end they're all the same. Now I'm going to just going to do this side as well just to make it finish finish it off. Like I say, I'm sure that people do this more than I do and do a much better job at it. sides of N scale is it's so darn small. It makes it very difficult to do things sometimes. So I'm just gonna get down here or, and uh, we're gonna come back to, to this shot. Alright so we'll just get this out of the way. So like I said earlier in the uh, in the uh, in the video there's a, a modeler, uh, he, he is uh, an expert, I, I mean what he does is amazing, it's just just unbelievably amazing. Uh, anyway, he, I've, I've been following him on, on his channel and he's, he's doing this uh, ferry landing of, uh, for uh, moving uh, rail cars on, onto a ferry and um, he was doing the, a parking lot around the end of one of these parts of his diorama layout and he was using something called fine pumice gel an acrylic medium with a fine gray texture and I thought well what have I got to lose if I buy a bottle of this stuff <laughs> so it's made by a, company, by a company called Golden they're out of the States You can use it alone or you can blend it with gels. Uh, it's got to be applied above 49 degrees F or 9 degrees C. Well, it never gets below 9 degrees C here. It gets cool down here. In fact, today's actually nice for some reason. I don't know why. 
Anyway, so what I've got another piece of plywood. And I'm going to just take one of the spatulas, because that's how I saw him put it on, and just take the spatula and It's uh, it's very much uh, very much a gel, uh, very thin. Unless it's I don't know if it's supposed to be stirred up or not. It doesn't look like it. Uh, but I saw him just using a spatula and just gradually laying on a layer. So the drywall work in my life, but I've never been able to to mud worth a damn. Anyway, so I'm I'm I've laid it down there. You can see it. It's, it's a very very light gray. Um, I'm gonna let that dry, and we'll see what it's like. I see what how it sands. See if I can get it smooth. Now the other product I got uh, again is uh, this AK. Uh, terrain product that they make and this one is their concrete. Uh, I've already done it. It's it's a very thick paste. Very thick paste and very granular. And uh, again I'm just gonna I'm just gonna take some and spread it on here so you can see it. Just much more grainy, much more grainy than than the the gel medium. So I'm going to let these set up, and uh, at the beginning of the next video, we'll uh, we'll show you what what we're going to do, uh, which one we're going to use on these here. I probably have uh, have sanded these. Uh, and cleaned up all of the extra uh, compound that's uh, on the rails where it shouldn't be. And then uh, we'll get to painting it and putting the, uh, the building in place as a, a, a permanent. I'm probably going to have to do the, I'm going to have to balance these tracks uh, as well uh, to um, because it's, it's just, it just seems to be, that seems to be the natural sequence that I need to do things in. The other thing I have, uh, the other thing I have is I, uh, I purchased a, um, a tower crane. You know, the, the, the ones that build skyscrapers, they're the little spindly things, and then they got a huge long arm. Well, the uh, uh, DAPR uh, 3D, in Britain, makes models. You know, they have two type, uh, two mo two different tower cranes. Uh, one is motorized, and one is is not. And there are different style of of uh, of crane. That crane is going to go right here, uh, and it's a uh, hundred scale feet tall, and it's going to be here so that if they ever needed to remove the parts for inside the crusher, that crane can can get there. Uh, I bought the motorized one, which means that uh, when you put power to it, it, it actually rotates, it turns. And uh, it didn't come with a dolly that uh, the, uh, the hook would travel along, along the, the, the perpendicular arm to the ground. 
Uh, so I've, I've modeled one in Fusion 360 and I still have to, to get to that to, and get that printed. Uh, but next week we'll, we'll be painting this. We'll be ballasting that. And I've got the crane painted. I just need to finish assembling it. And then, of course, I've got to do some of the electrical work, all the wiring that needs to be done for it. And I'm, I, I had a thought that I would put some lights on it, but uh, since it rotates, it's a little tricky to put lights on it. But I might put one on the on the uh, the, uh, the base that uh, the the crane hook uh, sits on, just uh, maybe a flashing red light, just something like that. Anyway, thank you for watching this week. Uh, I think we're at twenty some episodes, and I had twenty some uh, subscribers, which is amazing. I, mean, uh, I, will, I thank you for for taking the time to uh, to watch these videos. Um, so that's it for now. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next week. Uh, this this one should be out on Thursday. It's Wednesday here. Uh, so now um, I have to uh, finish. The, the, the taping and uh, get over to my computer and start working on editing everything together so that uh, you have a video to watch. So for now I want to thank you for, uh, for watching and uh, we'll see you next week.